All right. Let's do Revelation chapter 1, verse 9 and 10 to prove our first point, which says that spirit dimensions are spiritual realities and realms in heaven that God allows our spirit man to come in contact with when we yield to the Holy Spirit. Who is there with me in the book of Revelation chapter number 9? Revelation chapter 1 verse 9, sorry. 1 verse 9. And I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. He was outlawed. He was, he was driven out of civilization and domiciled on the island of Patmos. He was cut off from the churches that God has sent him to prophesy to. So there was no means by which he could communicate with the churches in the territories that God had sent him because he was isolated from those territories. And that was the case. The limitation of space and time was the trouble until he found an outlet until he was able to climb into the dimensions of the spirit, until the Holy Ghost gave him access into the realms of heaven. And the moment you get into the realms of heaven, as we are going to see shortly, the, the parameter of measurement called time, the parameter of measurement called space no longer counts. Because this, the spirit realm, the realm of God, Is a realm that is not sitting on time and space. It is sitting on spirit and life. The kings of those days had separated the apostle and confined him to the Isle of Patmos for him to hunger and die. They had dealt with him seriously and he was concerned about his affliction, his wounds. But on the Lord's day, he climbed into an outlet that the Holy Ghost made available. And suddenly he was in a realm where there was no pain. He was in a realm where there was no time. The first thing he encountered in that realm was the spirit mode transportation. There are 12 things he encountered as he journeyed across the lengths and breadths of heaven. There were new parameters. There was a new frame of reference. There was a new, a different kind of civilization. And he was invited. Are you there? Okay. All right. Revelation chapter 4 verse 1. You will see the invitation. And that's the invitation that God is handed out to every intercessor the world over at this time. There's an invitation. You see, he said, and after this, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me. Now, listen, are, are, you, are you still there? Now, this man began to hear a trumpet blast. Just like someone that picks up the trumpet here and begins to play. And through the gift of interpretation of tongues. This man was hearing the message that was being communicated by the blast of the trumpet. Oh my God. Are you there? Now, this is what the trumpet say. The trumpet sound. It says, come up here and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. That's what we call a summon. A summon. A summon is when God activates the volcano inside of you. And you just feel like praying. Maybe you are in the post office. You are in the office. You are in an executive meeting. Everyone is seated with their bow tie. And they are all 
confused because the figures do not tally. And then suddenly there's the volcano is activated. What is happening is that God is summoning you. But you see, even though he's summoning you, you are not going to experience heaven's transport mode until you yield. So the moment he was summoned, as he, he yielded to God, he was transported. So we have a summon here. Then the next thing we see here is transportation. Oh my God, you are still not with me. And the Bible says, and immediately I was before the throne. He did not move. See, oh my, are you there? Now, changing from one location to another location in the spirit doesn't require physical movement. No, no. See, now let's do something. I want us to clap all the claps for this week. Now, then we'll finish it and then we'll, we won't clap again. <laughs> So we'll finish clapping for the whole week. <laughs> when you change locations from one point to the other in the realm of the spirit, you don't need to move in the natural. You don't need to move. The spirit realm is not different from this physical realm in terms of distance. It is only different in terms of dimension. It is sitting in another dimension. And it is only the Holy Ghost that can take you through that dimension. So it's not about something that you did in the flesh. Oh, no. I was in the spirit on the last day. That was his entry point. Are you there? As he was arriving in the spirit, he was hearing a summon. Come up here! And he yielded. Instantly, the spirit transport mode took him. You will travel in the spirit first before you can travel the kind of journey that Philip did, that it was, it was taken from. You are still not with me. Are you with me? One of my desires is that I should, trans I should change the way Philip traveled. I want to use Philip's travel agency at least once in my lifetime. But, and just in case you desire like me, let me tell you the process. First of all, you must know the experience of what it means to travel spiritually. When Gehazi went to collect the gold that his master rejected, he came back home thinking he had a secret. And his master told him, did not my spirit go with you? His spirit was a surveillance camera that accompanied him to where he went to receive the wages of disobedience. The wages. Are you there? So he knows the experience of being carried by the Spirit into the journeys of God. I was in the Spirit. Can you tell when the volcano begins to erupt? Can you tell when there is a summon? Can you tell how it feels, the sign that God is calling you into a fast? Many of us have aborted our journeys. We have discarded our, our progression. You see, in heaven, we, have, we don't have now. We don't have yesterday. We don't have today. We have now. And this now is a perpetual continuum. The moment you are in the spirit, and the Holy Spirit brings you into the consciousness of a certain heavenly reality. You realize that that reality did not begin because you arrived. The reality was existing before you came. It's just like you using a straw. If it's not connected to the liquid, you are not sipping anything. But the moment you put it into the liquid, you begin to draw in something. So my prayer every day is carry me, Holy Ghost. What is the source of prophecy? 
He said, prophecy does not have his origin with man. It's not a function of the will of man, but holy men of old, they speak. How did they speak? Because they were carried by the Spirit. The most glorious experience that a man can have is to be carried by the Holy Ghost. When last did you plead with him? Carry me. Take me along. That's one of the prayers of men that know the journeys of God. And that's one major prayer we are praying tonight. We are telling him, what? Carry me. Because the realm of God is, 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 is all sufficient, but the realm of man is insufficient. God designed the journeys of man in such a way that you will find the insufficiency in the natural, but you will find sufficiency in the supernatural. So that the journey of man is a journey that requires that he will be looking upward all through his life. Because that's where his sustenance will come from. That's where his sufficiency will come from. A man that doesn't look upward is a man that has found confidence in the flesh. And if God wants to help you, what he will do to you is that he will confound your flesh by allowing a situation that is superior to the capacity of your flesh to overwhelm you. It is not because he wants you in custody. He just wants you to come into the knowledge of the fact that in, in the flesh we are ins insufficient. The Bible says it's the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profits nothing. It has already been judged in scripture that you can make no profit in the flesh. So all true sons of light seek to be carried in the journeys of God. 